This time on Boneyard Revivals, we don't set the square body on fire once. No, 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 no. We set her on fire uh, twice. All in an effort to try to make this thing run better than it ever has. And I'm going to tell you right now, it was worth it. Hi, I'm Robert, and you're watching Boneyard Revivals. Oh, also, Shop Dog Rex is here. Right? You say hi to everybody? You say hi? No? Ah, I got him! This is our 1985 square body Chevy. As you guys know, this is probably the most popular vehicle on the channel, and we've done so many numerous different things with this between motor swaps, transmission swaps, three month builds to go on Hot Rod Power Tour 2022, and a bunch of other crazy stuff. But what some of you may have not known is that this truck, when we did our budget 350 build and swap back into the truck before Power Tour, we got it in the truck and this truck just never ran quite as good as we knew it could. And today we're going to be fixing that. Ramuski. Come on. Come on. Can you, can you get out of the truck? Come here. Can you get down? You want that yourself, don't you? Come here. Come here. Come here. I got you. Come here. Come here. Come here, my baby. Come here. Come here. Oh. Oh. Why are you fighting me? Come here. Oh. Oh. Daddy's got you. It's all right. I don't know. I know. Children, aren't they the greatest? Okay, safety first. All right, let's go. Now we're ready. All right, so we have a few parts here to go over on the table. We have a cap and rotor set from MSD that's up in the far left corner. Just below that, we have wire looms that are from Proform. I really like the Proform products. They look really cool, uh, but those wire looms are gonna help not burn up spark plug wires because we've actually had a few spark plug wires burn up. Also here we have a set of brand new spark plug wires. Uh, they are eight millimeters and it's gonna be the Summit kit. Um, they were pretty cheap and I really like the color red. I think it's gonna look really good in the engine bay. Also on top of that, we have a Brawler carburetor rebuild kit. That's going to help us uh, get this car back in tune. All right, so one of the things that I wanted to go over here for you guys, which I already pre-recorded one of these clips kind of explaining all this, but my audio guy screwed up and there was absolutely no audio, so he's fired. Oh wait, that'd be me. Oh, all right, well, see ya. Anyway, um, I wanted to go over, kind of explain to you what a distributor does. This is an extra one that I have. This was actually out of our original uh, 350 that was in this truck. Um, basically, I just kind of wanted to show you how it worked. I took all of our old components that were in our MSD that's currently in this engine, and I put it in this old distributor um, because I don't know how many miles were on this distributor and whatnot on that old rotor and whatnot, and I figured, as much as I'm replacing all of that stuff, I know it did function. This this rotor did work. Um, this cap that was off the MSD, uh, Street Fire, they both worked. I just wanted to get new replacement pieces, put them in so I know that wasn't the issue. But so I put it all, I reassembled it on this distributor. But now I'm going to explain to you how these work. So HEI, honestly, is one of my favorite distributors. Honestly, it is my favorite distributor. Super easy, kind of like a plug and play kind of deal. It just, it works really, really easily. You just plug everything in and it just kind of does its thing. There's only a few tiny little hiccups that these ever really had and they were really, really easy. One of the big things that would go out on these were the 
ignition module, which your ignition module can be found just under the rotor. It's going to be this guy right here. This is a four prong one. If I am not mistaken, sometimes those would go out. We've seen that a lot on the channel. Um, but besides that, they were actually pretty good. So basically I want to explain to you how these distributors actually work with, um, with your rotor and your cap. So you have your rotor, obviously your rotor spins with the distributor. If you look down at the very bottom of the distributor here, you're going to have this gear. This gear is what actually, uh, goes to the back of the camshaft. If you ever look at the back of your cam, there is that gear on the end of it. And with that gear on the back of your camshaft, that actually goes into that little guy right there. And that's what actually drives the distributor. Also, one of the big things that um, a lot of people accidentally mess up when stabbing a distributor in, if you look at the very, very end here, try to get it close enough for you so you can actually see it. See how there's that little straight piece in there? This actually goes all the way down into the bottom of the engine to your oil pump it's very very crucial that that gets aligned up correctly and dropped all the way in that slot there's actually a little slot that kind of looks like that on your uh, oil pump that slot has to drop into it and then when this spins that's what actually drives your oil pump super super important that you get that lined up but coming back up top to the cap basically the cap obviously rotates as the distributor spins right so you obviously have, or sorry, your rotor, not your cap. The cap is here, which goes on top, right? If you flip your cap over and look inside, you see a bunch of little metal tangs in there. Basically, what actually happens is there's that metal tip on the, uh, the tip of your rotor there. As your cap's on it, that's, this rotor will spin inside. And when it goes past your little tangs there, it'll pass an electric current from the tang of your rotor to the tang of the inside of the cap and that then transfers that energy that spark to the top here that's obviously your spark plug wire which i have one right here that i can grab for you so the spark plug wire would sit on that correct so if you have it connected properly like that it's not on all the way but you get the gist it'll then send your spark through the spark plug wire which then your spark plug wire as you all should know at this point, we'll go into your spark plug. So that's how you kind of get that guy on. It clicks in like that. This guy is obviously inside the cylinder head, making the spark happen. And that's how the whole ignition thing kind of works. I figured I'd actually show you that so you could visualize it. So it kind of makes sense um, for some of the old school guys that knew that. And we're just kind of going, uh-huh, uh-huh, right on, my dude. Um, but with that being said, just want to show you how that works. So that's that taken care of. So we got our old cap and rotor and whatnot here. As you can see, we have some dust and whatnot on it. That old coil that we had in there, hmm, that could potentially be an issue. I don't think it's our actual problem, but could lead to them. So that's why we're going to throw in our other one. But we're throwing in our newer one here. This is our new cap. We're going to be putting on our uh, coil cap on that as well. I'm just putting on all the screws, and then at that point, I checked everything too on our distributor to make sure that nothing for our vacuum uh, advance was locked up or anything. That all moved, that all looked good. So we'll throw all this back together, starting with that back on the engine. Then we'll throw our cap and uh, coil all together. And then we'll throw all that back on. Then we'll get to, uh, got to get out the old plugs, get rid of the old wires as well. We're going to keep our boots though. Uh, and then we're throwing in our new plugs, our new wires. And uh, that will take care of that portion of the uh, of the segment. What? 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 What seems to be the problem? You don't like the cone, do you? Can we get an F in the chat because he's no longer a uh, a man? If you know what I'm saying. What? All bark. Big boy, I'll bark. One thing I'll mention here as we're throwing our rotor together, this is going to be the coil that we're putting in it. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, double check to make sure that you actually have your bushing and this little guy. They both need to be in there. Uh, I actually just assembled this, looked over and saw that they had the two little baggies here with that in. And looked at the bottom of the cap and saw that there wasn't one in there. So super, super important to make sure that you remember that stuff. And now that we have our 
bushing in place there with our little connector we can throw our coil back in the top of our cap and then get our cap and throw it on top of the distributor why why did they make this difficult oh oh not as agile as i used to be here comes all the old dudes in the comment sections oh you're young buddy listen sometimes it ain't the age it's the mileage all right oh okay now we're in here we got a rotor in and go ahead and slap down our slap down our new cap with the coil in it all right update time distributor is together we put our spark plug loom uh, holder slash, you know, the, the things that hold the wires up so they don't get toasted by the headers. Uh, we have those both on, and we also have our brand new spark plugs in on both sides, tightened. It's all good, ready to go. Let's look at our old spark plugs. Huh. That's uh, richer than I'll ever be, that's for sure. Um, we did have a casualty. I did break one. It was number five. It was in a difficult spot on the uh, header there and I had the socket on it and then grabbed it with the wrench like you're supposed to do when you can't get on them and I just wasn't on it right and I broke it and I'm honestly kind of ticked about it because I could have cleaned these up and used these on another project but now we're down one so now we just have spares so they're probably going to go back in the new boxes for the new ones and go under the seat or in the glove box of this just so I have extra plugs if I ever need them disappointing i know but it's the way she goes so now that we have all that stuff you have something you want to say no okay so anyways now that we have all that together i'm going to start running our new spark plug wires from our distributor uh to our actual plugs and uh, get them tied in through our looms and all that good stuff and uh yeah then we'll be in pretty good shape but figure just give you a little check in here and show you how it's going all right, update time. Distributor is together. We put our spark plug loom uh, holder slash, you know, the, the things that hold the wires up so they don't get toasted by the headers. Uh, we have those both on, and we also have our brand new spark plugs in on both sides, tightened. It's all good, ready to go. Let's look at our old spark plugs. Huh, that's uh, richer than I'll ever be, that's for sure. Um, we did have a casualty. I did break one. It was number five. It was in a difficult spot on the uh, header there, and I had the socket on it and then grabbed it with the wrench like you're supposed to do when you can't get on them, and I just wasn't on it right, and I broke it, and I'm honestly kind of ticked about it because I could have cleaned these up and used these on another project, but now we're down one, so now we just have spares, so they're probably going to go back in the new boxes for the new ones and go under the seat or in the glove box of this just so I have extra plugs if I ever need them. Disappointing, I know, but it's the way she goes. So now that we have all that stuff, you have something you wanna say? No? Okay. So anyways, now that we have all that together, I'm going to start running our new spark plug wires from our distributor uh, to our actual plugs and uh, get them tied in through our looms and all that good stuff. Another note here that I wanted to mention looking at our spark plugs, if you notice, this thing this thing always ran, or not always, but when we, after a while, started running really, really rough on, uh, when you, on first fire up. You saw it earlier in the video when I first fired the truck up to bring it in here, that it wasn't running quite right, and actually out of the tailpipe, you could actually see white smoke coming out. That is an indication and a sign that there is unburnt fuel uh, and basically it's getting burnt up as it's leaving the exhaust. That also explains that crackling noise. Looking here at our spark plugs once again, that really does prove and indicate that this thing is, you know, once again running really, really rich. So we're going to have to pull that cover apart, see what we got going on. The new plugs are going to help it out a lot along with the new plug wires um, and kind of fixing all that stuff. So hopefully by the time we're done doing our carb rebuild here along with um, throwing in new plugs and the whole tune up, uh, double checking our timing, seeing where we're at there. Hopefully at
have everything buttoned back up. Uh, I think at this point, I put a little fuel into the uh, to the front bowl there, and I think at this point we're just gonna hop in and hit the key. Um, the timing's gonna be what it's gonna be right now. I'm just worried about it getting it fire up and see where it runs. We did have the timing set when we first got the engine in the truck, so I know it's gonna be in the ballpark. Um, the big thing is for us right now is where is our uh, our adjustments for our carb going to be. Um, and that's gonna be the big thing that we're gonna fight here. So um, I guess at this point, I'm gonna go over and double check everything one more time. And then I think we're gonna hop in the truck and turn the key and see what, see what, see what happens. Hopefully it runs a lot better than it did before. It is pissing oil. What is it pissing oil out of? Did I pull a dipstick too though? So you're not gonna believe this. Nah, no, you're going to. We discovered a completely, completely, separately, entirely different problem from the fact that the truck's not running right. Because this thing is profusely dumping oil onto the ground. Um, started investigating on what it was and <laughs> it's coming from the valve covers. In case if you don't remember, we have an older uh, set of uh, the side type valve covers on this truck. Um, the Vortec heads don't accept that. They're only a center bolt pattern. Uh, Summit sells these adapters. It's another company's name, but you can get them through Summit where it adapts the center bolt to the outside bolt. And they're like these nice billet aluminum pieces. Basically, what I'm guessing happened is when we, had, when we put those adapters on over at Joe's, we use a special type of... Um, sealer on the bottom side and then we put a regular really thick cork gasket on the top side and where it looks like it's leaking is below the actual machined adapter plate so basically what i'm thinking is it is it removes some of the material out of there and it was kind of my fault because when i took the valve when i went to go put these um the spark plug looms on they attach via the valve cover bolts on the bottom so i just took the bottom valve cover bolts loose slid them on and then retightened them um, what I'm thinking happened there was because it was so tight and I released the pressure, the whole valve cover did one of these and it pulled away just enough to start a, to basically open up a gap there. And basically within opening that gap, it's dumping oil. One of the next thing I, things I tried doing after I saw that though was unloosening every single bolt, all four bolts on the valve cover, taking it where it's loose where I could physically grab it and shake it and then tighten it down in an X pattern because that's going to help tighten it down via the corners and not pull it up or down and it still is leaking profusely so what I'm thinking is is there's no longer any sealer on the bottom side of those uh, billet valve cover adapters so now I'm kind of screwed now I really need to figure out um, what I'm going to do to seal these if I really really wanted to and I needed to get by in a pinch and I literally just had to put valve covers on these so I could literally just go to sleep tomorrow um, I have a set of the old center bolt valve covers that were on this engine before I put these ones on it. I don't like them. I can put them on for now. But then again, at the same time too, the wire looms are going to be completely useless because they would have nothing to attach to. Um, so we're, we're kind of in a pickle right now. The only other thing I can do is, is try to reseal and reuse these billet, um, this billet adapter. But that requires me taking the valve covers off then the billet piece is off, cleaning up the machine surface because on the Vortec heads, that flat surface where the valve cover actually seals is a machine surface. So I'd have to clean all that up, regoup it with stuff, whether it was literally, honestly, at this point, I could probably try some sort of sealer. Um, but basically that's kind of where we're at right now. We need to figure out what we're gonna do there before we can even move on to the tuning this thing. So. That's how it goes for me, you know, you, you try to fix something then you open up a whole completely different can of worms. But I'm happy that this is kind of a problem because at least, you know, if you guys were interested in getting those built valve covers, you know what to look for. So I'm not sure how we're going to solve this problem, but all I know is that I don't have no choice but to solve it. <laughs> okay, new day full of wonderful new discoveries. We found out what our insane oil leak was. Our cork gasket is split. Both of them are like that on the bottom, so basically it was just profusely dumping oil out of them. So we have a new set on the way. Um, it's kind of a shame because these are like the double thick gaskets and actually cost a little bit more to have on. Um, but we decided to go with these ones just because of how good they were and for being a cork gasket, they uh, 
had high reviews for being reusable. Um, but, uh, well, new ones. And uh, then we can go back to actually tuning the truck to make it run right. That's cool. And I'm also going to do the oil change now because of how much oil it actually lost. Uh, I came out this morning and there was a big, massive, you probably kind of see it. Now mind you, I had all night to spread around because I didn't clean it up last night like I should have. Oops. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do an oil change now because I don't know how much oil is in it. I mean, I can pull a dipstick and find out, but it needs an oil change anyways. Just do the oil change. <laughs> Okay, valve cover, back on, more sealer, check. Hopefully it doesn't leak any more oil now. <laughs> All right, let's pray for no oil leaks and uh, let's hope that it fires up. Are you fucking kidding me? Shut up! I'm doing stuff in here! Um, but yeah, so far, looks like we got no oil leak. But A few moments later. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I wish I had the, uh, the camera's rolling for that one. I just, I actually just set the truck on fire. Uh, I don't know what it is. We got an oil leak or something down, down there, but saw a lot of smoke when I pulled back in the driveway and it was nothing but flames. I'm lucky I was able to get it out when I did. Of course, I have a fire extinguisher in that truck, but it needs to be recharged. What use is a fire extinguisher that needs to be recharged if I didn't even have full coverage on it yet. <laughs> oh, I'm happy I'm laughing now, but that, that was not a fun experience at all. Something's up with this. Something's seriously wrong with this. Um, I think it's still bailing oil out of it, and that's what caught fire. It got hot enough on the header. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We, we, at this point, who knows what's gonna happen with this video. I just need to, I just need to take a moment here and uh, take a moment. All right, episode recap time. Rebuilt the carburetor, brand new distributor cap and rotor, different coil in it. That's a newer coil that should hopefully work. Brand new plug wires, plug wire looms, put it all together. Didn't run right. Okay, started messing with the carb again. Think we had the adjustments right. Cool, yep, good. Falling, all right, cool. Uh, started it back up, saw that we were dumping oil on the floor. Head scratched for a little bit. Realized it was dumping out of the valve covers. All right, cool. New valve cover gaskets. All right, cool. To replace the old crappy ones. Cool. Okay. Still leaking out of the passenger side, so we put a little bit of RTV for our valve cover adapters. All right, cool. Fired it back up. Started tuning on it. All right, running pretty good. Let's hop in and take it for a ride. You didn't see that part. I just went and just said, hey, I'm going to drive it. Okay, here we go. Pull back in the driveway. Truck's on fire. All right, cool. Um, And we're now back here. All right, so we're all cut up now. Good. Excellent. All right, cool. So where are we at? So, we know that it leaked oil off of the passenger side, right? Cool. Apparently, it was still leaking off the driver's side, too, but visually looking at it when I had it out here running, I didn't see that it was still leaking until I pulled it out on the road and gave her hell, and actually, it ran as good as it arguably should have. Carb wasn't quite there yet, but we were really close and then it was just a big cloud of white smoke and pull back in the driveway and well you kind of know the rest i wish i had the cameras rolling because the truck was actually on fire i wouldn't lie to you i'm not lying the truck was on fire the evidence is all over the header um but anyways now that that's passed and we're moving on from that we're gonna rip apart the driver's side we're gonna reseal the bottom of that valve cover adapter there and uh, then maybe maybe 
we'll have this thing uh, <laughs> not profusely dumping oil. That'd be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, hindsight being 2020, as it <laughs> usually is. Uh, yeah, I should have just RTV'd both of them of the valve cover adapters and we probably wouldn't be here right now and I probably wouldn't have caught the truck on fire and almost killed me my dog and burnt my house down and my truck that's not on full coverage yet so I couldn't even collect on insurance money even if it did burn to the ground idiot anyway let's rip off the driver's side valve cover and reseal that up and get that cleaned up and double check everything making sure it's not leaking any more oil top it off with more oil, readjust the carb a little bit, and then do this all over again. You ready? All right, let's do it. Ugh. Ha! Something's still leaking. All right, another day. Been back out messing with the square body. Really didn't record anything for you guys because I wanted to kind of just get my head in the game, you know? It's hard sometimes um, when you're trying to film and work on something at the same time. And honestly, I swear some days I have ADHD, I can't focus on everything at once. And so sometimes it's difficult to film and just work on something at the same time. So sometimes off camera, I'll fiddle with stuff a little bit so my full attention can be, can be given. And um, we have a few issues. First one is the dog needs attention, right? You need some attention. What do you have? Do you have grass all around you? What did you do? What did you do? Are you playing with your stick? It's a little oversized for you, but whatever. Anyways, back to the square body here. Um, it's idling now, which is cool. Um, I st we, we still need to make so, adjust so many adjustments to that carb. Um, and then we're going to have to go over our timing too. We also have... Yeah, yeah, that's... That's oil, so the valve covers are still leaking. It's off of this side. If I get you back in here, you can kind of see where it's all wet. See how it's all wet right there on the block? It is still leaking out of our adapters. It's no longer the valve cover, it's, it's the adapter itself. One thing I also wanted to say too while we're here is uh, I feel like kind of a complete failure right now, if I'm being 100% honest. You know, every time I get in this camera, there's this pressure that feels like you're supposed to be the guy that knows everything and you're just supposed to be able to just fix stuff and you know there's 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 just a stigma about guys who stand in front of a camera and do the youtube thing where they're it's almost like they're sometimes some of them i don't know i guess you feel like they get a god complex or you know the audience themselves you know hail the guy or love the guy so much that they feel like he can just fix everything and i i want to be straight up honest and straightforward like i always try to be on this channel and be genuine and be honest with you guys i don't always have the answer and i'm not always right and i make sure i tell you that in every single video and every single comment when i respond to you guys i try to be as level-headed and uh honest as possible because i'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that i know everything because i don't and this is a prime example this was supposed to be an easy fix and here i am banging my head against the wall and uh, actually coming to a point where I'm actually going to park the truck for, for a little while just because I got other stuff I got to do and I'm just honestly frustrated. Um, but it happens and that's even a thing too I want to tell any younger viewer who are watching this. And honestly, this applies to, to guys, you know, in their 20s, 30s, 40s. And, you know, I know my main demographic of guys are guys between their 20s and their 50s. And, you know, I think we all come to a point in life where we get kind of stuck in a rut and um, or we get frustrated with a project like this. And I want to be the first one to say in front of everybody that that's okay, man. It's okay to get stuck or get whatever and, you know, get frustrated. And, uh, but the key is, is the perseverance after the fact. This truck will run right and it will run good. And we're just going to keep attacking it until it does that. Um, but it's okay to stop and take a break and say, you know what, I need to move on to something else. It's okay to do that. And I want to be the first one to stand here and tell you that. So with that being said, I'm going to breathe for a minute and, uh, We'll be back. Well, almost two and a half months later, here she is. We're back with the square body. We got some things that we have to go over here with you. So let's let's dive in. First things first, one of the last clips that you saw was this continuing to leak oil. And I finally located it. So you know that we put sealer on the bottom of these, but 
you can see that, right? This adapter plate is actually bent. And the reason why it is bent, if I can find them, they send you little adapters that go on the bottom side here that I actually attach to um, like the head side. They don't attach, but basically they take up that room because when the spacer goes on, there needs to be something to take up that gap right there between the adapter and uh, where the bolt goes in on the, the Vortec head. Basically, the, the company that made these, at least in my opinion, so here is one of those little adapters. Basically, that goes on the underside like that, and the bolt will go down over top of it, and that's what takes up your gap when it goes on the head. Um, actually, here, this is a swirl port head. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So these aren't the Vortec heads that we actually have on our engine. These are a set of, what, I think these are, what, 193 swirl port heads? Yeah, right there. But basically, as you can see, the bolts still line up, where if I wanted to use these adapters on these heads, I could get away with it, um, just because they're the same center bolt design. But basically, these bolts are supposed to line up with the actual bolt hole, if I can get you down in there. Kind of see what I'm talking about there, how they go into that hole? Basically, this... It's supposed to take up that space in there. So when you go to tighten these down, it doesn't bend these really bad. And uh, if you're going to notice here, I don't know about you, but that looks like it's bent to me. So basically what that means is these got tweaked putting them on and we didn't torque them down that bad. I think we did like a 96 inch pounds which turns out to be like eight foot pounds so i mean they're only a little tiny bolt you don't want to crank them down too hard but i guess it was enough to bend these that or what really happened was these are not actually the correct length to fit in there so when it squeezes them it'll actually it bends them in anyway so that kind of sucks because basically that means these kind of don't work i found another set of adapters that i might try um that actually have a little rubber gasket on the bottom side here. And I think it's a little bit of a better design than just trying to have slap a, you know, a machine surface against another machine surface and have to put RTV. Cause I think the RTV slides out too, which I kind of don't like. But our solution for now is cause of what I had laying on the shelf. I think where some of our issues start here is that a few things I want to go over that I don't think I actually ever had a chance to mention on this channel about this truck before. We were in such a hurry getting this thing slapped together for power tour that we didn't get to go over a lot of the details on how we actually made stuff work, especially with the motor and the tranny. So obviously this is our cable linkage here. This is the original factory one. This is actually the original factory bracket that we kind of cut and kind of made work. We had to extend it because of our one inch phenolic resin uh, carb spacer. That's a four hole. Um, and then also if you look here, this is our TV cable. If you look past that, you kind of see how janky that is. That's our return spring. This one is the original return spring that was on the Quadrajet on the original motor in this truck. So, yeah. And honestly, some of the issues that I'm seeing within tuning this is you'd go to hit it and it wouldn't and it wouldn't return all the way where I can actually grab it and pull it back because um, that return spring's not doing its job properly. And it's honestly mostly because there's nothing for it to attach to. Um, so basically, that's something that we got to fix. And we do have a fix for that coming up and i think that's going to help us because we've been trying to get this carb tuned in and we can't even get it to idle right because our throttle is not responding the way it should be that's been an issue that's been kind of like it, it worked fine when it first went together but because of how weak that spring's gotten over time and, and just the setup of it it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and also too like this this setup is it works but it's a little janky if i'm being 100 percent honest because it attaches back here and it just doesn't look clean um, so we actually went ahead and we bought one of those billet uh, adapter paces that are actually going to help us hook up our throttle cable and our TV cable for our 700R4. And then also is going to have a return spring set up on it. So that should hopefully solve those issues. And let's show you that. All right, so here's that throttle bracket from TrickFlow. What's really cool about this is you can get it on the back side here. This guy is going to mount on our carb something like that basically what that's going to do is obviously if you don't remember this truck has a uh, built 700r4 in it um this is the top linkage here is going to allow us to accept our throttle cable and then the bottom one is going to allow us to accept our tv cable which is right there for and that's basically your 
your kick down cable on the 700R4. So it's really important that you get those TV cables right and adjusted right, like with that button and everything. Otherwise you can potentially smoke the trans. So uh, trick flow here with this bracket pretty much kind of gives you everything you need. Then you have a, a set screw back here to adjust it, which we're going to do that. Um, and then for our return spring setup, it actually is up front here. It's a dual spring return and you can uh, adversely affect the return rate of it um, by adjusting it. So that black piece there is going to hook up to the top uh, hole in our throttle bracket. So we're going to figure something out for our, our actual uh, cable there. Um, but yeah, so everything else should just kind of fall into place there as far as our return goes, which is pretty slick. So I'm kind of excited to get it on there and get it working and see what happens. I went ahead and got our bracket on here. I do like how this all works. How you have your throttle cable up top here, then your TV cable, both in which are adjustable. Um, and then your dual spring return up here. The only thing where it gets weird is I kind of had to use some old stuff that was here. Basically, they send you this bracket piece and a bunch of other stuff for it to attach. Um, the way I had to do this, because the way we had it set up is we had a two big washers on each side of our actual bracket here. And then this bolt went through, and then that's what came out for our actual uh, throttle linkage. So what I ended up doing is I ended up kind of mixing pieces together. So these two, the bolt here and then this nut here is what actually keeps our return spring tight against it. And then this locking one here is what actually keeps our throttle on it. So when we go to hit it, hopefully that works. And if I want to, too, I can adjust the, the spring rate by this by moving it back and uh in and out so obviously the tighter you make those return springs the heavier of a pedal it's actually going to feel like so when you actually hit the pedal it'll actually be heavier because think of all that you know retention that you're you're going against another thing i tried to make sure too of is that wide open throttle we actually have it um in the pedal which is good so yeah i think we're doing pretty decent here and we finally get to get rid of let me show you this that was our return spring. Uh, yeah, no, that that's not gonna fly. Look at look how flimsy this thing is. Like here, I'll hook it on my pinky here. And that's just me pulling it. So I think this is gonna be a much better setup. I don't have to worry about our throttle whether it's actually opened or closed. These obviously were our old aluminum billet valve cover adapters that we had. And they're bent bad all over the place and everywhere. So we came up with another solution, which is just buying another set of billet aluminum uh, valve cover adapters. These ones, in comparison, look how much more beefier they are. Lots of extra thickness in the uh, billet piece. Another thing I like about these ones is these, as you can tell by the RTV on the bottom of them, we had to seal that with RTV. These come with a little rubber gasket that you just insert into a machined uh, flat or into a machined spot on them. So that means no gasket is required. So we can just slap these on the way they are. So let's hope these ones work and don't leak oil like those ones did. So we can put the glorious Edelbrock Elite Series valve covers with air cleaner lid back on that engine because I'm. I, I just want to cry every time I open the hood and see those center bolts. And I know they say chrome don't get you home, but that chrome helps me sleep at night, okay? Thank you. Oh, yeah, baby. We're back in business. I I like that way better than that hideousness. So um, we can get the other one on now, and hopefully they don't leak. And then I guess we're back to working on the carb some more. Yeah. Got it fired up so far, so good. Don't look like we got any leaks anywhere yet. Which is good because you know they're not they're not supposed to leak, unlike the last set. Hopefully it stays that way and I can keep these valve covers on here because I love how this thing looks with them. Like I said, still not running right, we gotta mess around with it more, but Okay, so it actually came to a point where I kept messing with the carb and we just couldn't get it right. And I started thinking to myself, 
we really need to go over the timing again. So I ended up taking it over to Joe's because at the time that I was working on this, I actually didn't have my own timing light. Took it over to Joe's, put a timing light on it, and found out that it was actually um, retarded by about six degrees um, from where we wanted to be. Which usually on a small block Chevy, you want it anywhere between like 10 to 12 normally, um, depending on what's you know what your setup is. So with that being said, um, I did initially have that clip, but somehow lost it um, within editing. So I don't have that clip, but what you're going to be seeing next is me showing you the uh, what that what timing is and explaining it to you on our 1985 Oval Go Cutler. So timing. Now that it's the topic of discussion, let's talk about it. Now that the square body is set, I wanted to show you on something that's an actual good example. So we have our 1985 Oldsmobile Cutlass behind us with a 307, and let me show you what I'm talking about. So timing makes such a huge difference. Currently, right now, I just pulled out my timing light and got this thing dialed in for around 11 or 12 initial degrees of timing. Now what that means is, is on initial setup, the distributor is set and it is advanced 12 degrees from top dead center on cylinder number one. Um, so right now it's set at 12 and that's most small blocks usually take 12 initial. Um, it's just kind of the number that everybody goes for. But with this set at 12, watch your throttle response. that throttle response is just right there it's not lazy like that was it it's right there the second you just it's right there the belt squeals because that's the wrong belt but we're not going to talk about that but it runs pretty good you listen to it i did uh turn down the idle on the on the quadrajet you see how it's just kind of nice now i don't have a tack in this car set up but if i were to guess what the idle is right now i'd say it's 550 600 rpm it's just sitting here it runs nice it's smooth there's no lag in the throttle and that just shows you what 12 initial is now what i'm going to do is for you guys to show you how big of a difference and how important your timing is i'm going to loosen up our distributor and i'm going to change the timing i'm going to retard it and show you how big of a difference this makes and how worse it will actually run with the timing being off got our distributor loose so let's fire this guy back up Oh boy, don't even want to. There it goes. So, now that our distributor is loose, what I'm going to do is we'll grab it. And this is retarding it. You hear how all of a sudden it changes? The idle is much lower. And you hear the throttle response is not that great. You hear how it's got that lag? That's because it's retarded. We twist it back, you're going to hear the idle come up. Listen. came up there's no longer that lag basically what's been wrong with that truck is that the distributor was when we first set it i don't know if i accidentally bumped it along the way or whatever but it was too far retarded which basically means that you're changing when the spark and everything's happening inside the cylinder so again turn it back hear how it retards you hear how it almost died? Because that's when everything inside the cylinder is actually happening. So now what we're going to do is, now that we've changed our timing, we're going to use our timing light here to get our initial set. Now I would, if I had a tack on this, I would set the total timing. But for right now, I'm going to set the initial at 12. So this is your typical dial type timing light. If you look on here, you hear, see how it says advanced degrees, and it's got a wheel, it goes from zero to 60. 
for your initial, which is just idle, we're going to want to set it for 12. So you're going to turn your dial, and in order for setup on this, you'll, you have your loom here that goes over your number one spark plug wire. And then you have your negative and your positive terminals that connect to your battery, which powers your light. And let me shut this off for you quick. So now that you probably can actually hear me. If you look down, let's see, it's hard to see on this engine specifically. Let me get you in there. There is actually the OEM timing tab on this guy. It's, it's down in there. You kind of can't see it, uh, but kind of just believe me. It's there. I promise you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you like that. It's right there if you can see it now basically the way that these timing tab works is that you usually have your zero in the middle of the tab so you got your whole tab zeros in the middle and you have plus three and minus three basically how this works is when you go to put your timing light you find a spot you put it down pretty much right in the middle of that tab and you pull the trigger it's going to flash a light now if we have our initial timing set at 12 degrees and we point it down there if on that tab you're, there's a groove on the on the harmonic balancer every time it spins and comes around that light's going to flash and when that mark is on a certain spot so say if we have this set at 12 degrees or an initial timing and the engine is running at idle and say we have the light on it and the that that line that groove that's in the harmonic balancer keeps coming up at minus two you take 12 and you subtract the 2 from it. So that means the your initial current initial timing is at 10 degrees. So you need to turn your distributor and advance it more until you see your 12 at the 0. And if it's obviously, say if it's past that, say we have it set at 12 and that line comes up and it keeps coming at plus 2, that means it's actually at 14 degrees of initial timing. And that means you're going to want to retard the timing a little bit so that's how your whole system with the timing light and all that stuff works i'm gonna try now to fire this up it's gonna be a little difficult for me to see if i can actually find um a spot where i can show you the timing light and the tab worst case scenario if i have to i'll fire the square body up because i know it's easier to see on the square body all right so we got the square body fired up here i'm gonna show you the timing tab on this one since it's much easier to see we have our timing light set up here. And we point it down at it. See that line? So see how that line's at zero? That means it's set where you want it to be set. Which also means that the square body finally runs good. Sick. So basically that's what ended up being our issue. The thing wanted more timing. And I mentioned it like two or three times in this video saying that it needed it, but I also told you that no matter what, we were going to get it done and we we're gonna make it happen, and we did. So I guess thanks for sticking it out with me. It was a long, hard fought battle. And in the end, when you don't give up, you come out victorious. Perfect.